I am idea, money, talent, employ. Let's start with an idea. An idea is a differentiator between a startup and a traditional old age business. For any startup, idea is the first building block. You set up a shop that sells chocolates outside a school. You are guaranteed to make some money. You might not make enough money or might be chased away by the civic authorities. But nevertheless, you can still find the means to stay above the poverty line. But the idea of startup is different, very different. It comprises the new business model, new products that need to be sold to the upwardly mobile middle class. In an era of a digital world, due to the internet, the chances of competition are very, very high because internet nullifies geographical distance. They might not like an idea, might not be enthusiastic about it, or there might be many competitors with a better offering. Obviously, the idea has to be brand new, fresh, innovative, technically sound, free from legal issues, socially acceptable, and need to have the potential to make a lot of money. There are lots of adjectives in the previous sentences that we are assuming that a group of founders will have technical geeks, business honchos, legal experts, and sociologists. This is hardly the case. Most founders of startups in India are typically young professionals, having an excellent pedigree, are confident, articulate, and have an appetite for taking risks. However, this is not sufficient. To make an Indian startup actually work, it is required to add more checks on the money supply. An unbridled amount of money is not exactly the best way to go forward. Founders should know that the purpose of the business is to earn profit and provide value to customers. So after talking about the idea and money, what next? Which is by far the most vital factor? Well, it is talent, the talent of an employee. Once the founder have a decent idea and have a financial resources, who is going to do the work? Here, again, Indian startups are very different. Let us now come to the staff. Let's take an example of an IT startup. In today's market, getting a good computer programmer is very tough. This may sound weird, seeing the number of top technical colleges in India. However, it is true. Students from most of the top rated institutes are hired by well-paying multinationals through campus selections. New startup finds it very tough to match MNC remuneration. As a result, they have to go to other non-premier or tier 2 colleges to look for suitable talent. There is a big division in India between different classes of institutes and new startups would often find otherwise serious students that lack sufficient practical skills. It is not wise to invest a lot of money in training employees for early stage startups. In this scenario, startups need employees who are all set to begin coding and thus are productive. It is even harder to find mid-level professionals who can lead the team. Their salaries are either obnoxiously high or they have shifted to people management in their organization. In both the cases, such employees are not suitable for a startup in their early stage. Please note that the current Indian educational system's emphasis on practical skill is somewhat very low. This might be not very relevant in premier institutes where students have other opportunities for exploring their creativity. But for the rest of the institutes, this is a very important issue. It is important that they produce students that companies can hire immediately after graduation. Spending lakhs of rupees on training students to write even simplest of the programs or be the part of bench strength not doing full-time job for companies, only big companies like Infosys, TCS and Wipro can afford it. This luxury cannot be afforded by small startups, nor they should be in the business of training. 
the responsibility of training solely lies with schools and colleges here we are not just talking just about technical skills a lot of graduates in this country are severely deficient in verbal skills frankly speaking we want an engineering student to write flawless english be articulate and be able to present to a technically literate audience we will find very few graduate students with these abilities if you start looking a lot of students pick up these qualities later in life however a broad majority of them do not this has caused at a very low level of language proficiency in adults unless the indian educational system starts putting a greater emphasis on humanities skills and focuses on all round personality development we will never find people who can run modern internationally competitive businesses let us now look at a different class of individuals who are very competent and want to join a startup such people ought to do something really innovative or they ought to see what it feels like work for a small company some of them join startups because they wanted to work in a company that sells product tagged with a line made in india however such examples are very rare in western nations a company is a company they have strict laws regarding conduct rights responsibilities and payments the owners can go to the prison if they violate terms of the contract if anybody is employed then they are employed with a contract which is legally enforceable here in india despite lots of laws on paper which are not bad at all the issue lies with the implementation there is a widespread belief among people that if they join a small company hardly any rules and policies are followed we do not want to lend credence to those rumors however we have a good number of anecdotal reports from various industries where people are complaining about obnoxiously long work hours irregular payments and improper standards for hiring and firing not all of these reports are false and this particular public perception leads to many technically competent people to avoid working in startup projects the lawmakers and our government should ensure that regardless of size of the organization all employment laws and processes should be followed as per rule the message should be loud and clear without exceptions laws are for everybody we have talked about ideas funding talent and employees but why do startups fail some statements we had too many founders and we made a lot of other errors we delivered on know how but we surely lacked in maturity of management skills we made the mistakes of focusing on technology first and customer development second our business idea wasn't bad we were just too slow and concentrated on the wrong things no one was working full time our business model sucked we lacked marketing skills we screwed up our chances of getting bought we had too much public relation too much money and no customer relationships launching a startup is a difficult attempt it takes a great product at a right time for a profitable market and an exceptional team to make it happen it also takes a healthy dose of money to make it all a reality it's not about the idea it's about the execution but then did you ask yourself what drives this execution what feeds that hunger to succeed that burning desire to shine the total commitment to becoming the best or die trying just like success failure is a state of mind most startups fail because the entrepreneurs have a failure based mentality and most of them are not even consciously aware of this fact they will usually blame it on the circumstances A common belief is that startups often fail as the founders and investors neglect to look before they leap surging forward 
with a plan without taking the time to realize that the original theory of business strategy is wrong needs to be changed they believe that they can predict the future rather than try to create a future with their customers entrepreneurs tend to be single minded in their strategies wanting the venture to be all about the technology or sales without taking time to form a balanced business plan failure is the norm stakeholders and startups let's do post mortem of reasons of stakeholders of startup journey people there is a reason why all the top investors and incubators place such heavy stress on team products pivot ideas change because markets can take unexpected turns but people tend not to change a great team is not just about selecting a group of smart people great teams complement each other's strong point and mitigate each other's weaknesses as a founder you must attract and retain the right people to build the technology understand your industry and scale your company most companies don't pick the team or have toxic founders from the start great people also attract other great people the biggest challenge for the startup is attracting top talent it starts with the founders as it is driven by vision and culture great companies never compromise in maintaining high technical and cultural bars product most business persons have lots of ideas but few of them are able to successfully turn that one big idea into the product which customers want to pay for is the product driven by a big idea that will be loved by customers everywhere and be significantly better than other alternatives it's unique capital unless the team is self sufficiently wealthy startups require money to fund operations and unless the income is coming in the balance sheet keeps getting more red and if they do raise money even the nicest aunt eventually would like her money back and venture capitalists want to see progress before investing more market many startups spend too much time focused on their product or service and not enough time finding a profitable market before they run out of runway and close shop startups can only burn cash for so long without customers and even when they do find a few customers it's not a slam dunk to be able to cost effectively reach more of them the employees a startup takes a unique combination of people to survive and thrive not only does it take talent but it takes people with experience to make the proper decisions time is not a friend of an early stage company that needs to discover its product and market and finds money to fuel the business There is little room for learning on the job. Mistakes done by founders. 1. Mistake in calculation of time period to make profit. This is a really tough to talk about making a profit. Since most of the first time entrepreneurs don't have any experience, they will make the mistake of calculating the period time to make a profit. Most of them think a first time startup will bring the profit back in one year however there are two possible cases the first is you make a profit in one year and decrease in next year the second is you completely misjudge the period time it may take you two years instead of one well practically a startup will need about 3 years to make a profit second mistake of market size First time entrepreneurs always make a mistake of the market size or they actually underestimate it. Some first time entrepreneurs overestimate their market share 10 times than the fact. They must think about the sales and marketing cost to reach this level of market size. 3. 
mistake of the fund and cash flow and managing it. This is a serious problem. We know that 82% of startups are self-funded. Yes, it's challenging to get funded. However, maybe they don't get supported at the right time. They should at least wait for possibly one year to get funded. Cash flow problem is very serious because no company can run without cash until they get funded. Managing startup companies cash flow is the most difficult but compulsory task. Poor allocation of resources and money. We have seen startups hire too many engineers, spend too much on marketing or waste it and other really idiotic expenditures. Raise too much money. Sometimes too much money creates laziness or undisciplined management decisions. We called it management blind spots or big rounds are like cracks for entrepreneurs. Take your pick. Money burns quicker than most of the entrepreneurs think. It's not paper, it's paper soaked in gasoline. Raise too little money. We call it funding to fail. You raise too little and you're always chasing the next bridge loan or funding rounds to take your company to the next half step. Being greedy with your equity is good, but when it comes to a drag on the product development or growth, it becomes absurd. If and when you can raise a decent round, do it and don't assume investors will be there at your beck and call a few months down the road. Most people are beauty queens or kings only once. Heavy independence on debt funding. A man is in debt is so far a slave. You are on the debt clock as soon as the loan is drawn down to start a business. Debt repayments are now cemented in time and you need your business to get to the BEP break even point as soon as possible. If you do not achieve your BEP in time, it may mean further borrowings to keep your startup afloat. The most obvious places to obtain further finances are from personal credit cards, followed by refinancing the mortgage on family properties. Then there are your best friends in the whole world, at least when they are getting their money back the family members and so on and so forth until you have no further capacity to borrow. Interest repayments kill your valuable cash flow. 4. Mistake of the customer's needs Another popular mistake that first-time entrepreneurs always make is to identify the customer's needs. When you collect a lot of good reviews from the audience, you think they will choose your products. The answer is quite occasional. As an example, you launched a good smartphone to the market and received a lot of supportive comments. But the fact that the market of the smartphone is evaporated by masters, Apple, Samsung. Now lots of Chinese companies, so how you can defeat them? That's the reason why you need to find your own niche. Five. Poor strategic management. Startup. Leadership always makes mistakes by not having mentors. Twos a company more than threes a crowd, inappropriate number of co founders. Choosing the wrong person as a partner. Failure in developing rewarding strategic partnerships. Failure in capitalizing on connections or networks. Lack of investor interest or financing. Investors or co-founders disharmony. Following bad advice. Reluctance in getting your own hands dirty. More thinking than doing. Lacking passion as well as domain expertise. Lacking focus. Half-hearted effort. Arrogance. Short-sightedness. Egoism. As we have observed from time to time, a person who was great at their trade craft like plumbers, builders, accountants, chefs make a move to their own business. 
while they are great in their particular trade they are not groomed or educated for trade business is like a wild animal one wrong move and you are finished knowing how to operate a business is mutually exclusive to know how to run a business 6 no business plan first stage concept second stage basic planning third stage detail if you fail to plan you plan to fail most failed businesses founders stop planning at the concept stage because they don't have business plan a and if something goes wrong then plan b or c the next key element to the business plan is to get you explicitly stating why why has it not done before why are you in business planning your business you have to think seriously about all the areas of business not just a fuzzy parts of your business like profit or sales if you want to give yourself a fighting chance you need to do consider meticulous details like operation employee ramp up funding forecast financials and logistics 7 money comes from people and everyone overestimates their own company contribution no matter how close friends how much you trust each other or how good your intents are money comes between people and everyone overestimates their own contributions founders become highly emotional about their companies 8 i didn't quit my day job soon enough some founders think their philosophy was to get as far as possible with a small seed round to do this they think keeping their day job would allow spending the money wisely on product or marketing actions incorrect if you can quit your job only then get down to the business period you need to be dedicated to your project meet people talk about it and promote it well and at the end of the day you were doing both things wrong your day job and your startup now it was tough to admit the idea wasn't as good as i originally thought or that we couldn't make it work for one we stuck with the wrong plan for too long it is hard to admit that the idea wasn't as good as we initially thought or that we couldn't make it work if we had been truthful with ourselves earlier on we may have been able to pivot sooner and have enough money left to properly execute the new strategy 10 knowledge is a tricky thing to sell because even experts disagree on some answers some founders think they are well educated they speak good english with their appearance they pretend to be very intellectual but that will not give you the license to succeed in your business your business needs sale and lead conversation not your etiquette factors that kill your business three factors which can kill your business before you even started a shareholder agreement looks like a no brainer but you wouldn't believe the number of companies that don't have the basics in place a classic example two or three friends have an idea and form a startup however even if you are incredibly close to your co-founders it's a very bad idea not to have a shareholders agreement in place and lots of founders skip this step the future of any business is unpredictable You really never know what may happen and having a solid agreement in place may save lots of business headaches. However, those friendships may die down the line. B. Employment guidelines. During the initial period of growth, founders don't often find the time to produce documents like employee handbooks. Some don't even have proper employment contracts. Contracts are clearly essential but don't neglect employee handbooks either. These outline what you expect from your staff and the procedures for any disciplinary action. If you don't have one in place, there will be nothing to fall back on. 
in case of a dispute. This can cause serious trouble and possibly land you in the tribunal. Get a watertight shareholders agreement and detailed employment guidelines as soon as you for your startup. You also need to know how you will track holiday, absences, sick leave, compassionate leave. Decide on this now as it may also have an important part in sharing your company culture. C. Doing everything yourself. Not even Superman can do everything by his own. Founders and CEOs often get completely bogged down in particulars when they should be focusing on the big picture. Let's summarize. For getting an answer to the question why startup fails, the absence of a clear USB, short-sightedness, lacking business understanding and running out of cash may not be the exact answer. However, these are few points which can be considered if we don't want to venture to fail. 1. Finding right team members is tough. 2. Competition killed the venture as there was no entry barrier. 3. The customer base was very small. 4. Demand is huge but supply part or resourcing is weak or unorganized. 5. Manpower is intensive. 6. Multiple ambitious partners could not align to the same goal. 7. Blindly following e-commerce without any distinguishing feature. 8. Addressing such clientele which is very easy to tap. Hence resources, attention and funding are continuously engaged in acquisitions instead of expansion and organic growth. 9. To prove a global model, the venture was serving small customer base in very scattered geography. Hence operational cost was very high. 10. The final goal was not so lucrative which could keep the founder continuously excited. Most common mistakes done by startups Giving impractical rebates to attract new customers. This leads to more investment with low profit. This kind of startup will more likely to run into a loss. Imitating successful startups For example, many startups replicated Alibaba, Amazon and Flipkart but couldn't succeed. An imitative startup will be less likely to succeed. Lack of viable business model Some startups with no clear vision postpone profits to next year. Such kind of business model is not sustainable in a long run. Unlike another country's startups, Indian startups are attracting a lot of investments through VC. With excessive funds, productivity may decrease. Sometimes too much investment and lack of investment both are a problem. Pressuring startups to maximize profit from VC firms leads to unnecessary stress and leading to shutting down of startups. Some startups fail due to carrying out their operations on a large scale without testing it on small scale first. Some startups went into losses because they launched in overcrowded sectors. Lack of expertise and knowledge leads to failing many startups founded by youngsters. Some startups have failed due to marketing. Some ideas may succeed in future, but not now. Timing is another vital factor. Implementing Western models in Indian market may not work all the time. Indian market is different. Lack of innovation. Making decisions emotionally. Lack of trust. Not using network or advisors. Underestimating competitors' potential is very risky. Conclusion. Everyone wants to utilize the opportunity with the startup's boom. But only a few are succeeding. There was a dearth of experienced mentors and trainers at the starting stage of startup boom. But with the growing expertise on startups and with the increasing government support, the success rate of new startups will more likely to rise in India.